week's edition of What's On in Worcester. Thanks for watching. I'm Errol Flynn, along with my co-hosts, Pamela, Jane, uh, Karen, and Brian. We're going to give you the report this week on what's going on on both mountains. We're located right now reporting to you from the Boot Pub. Great place to come, fabulous bands, good times. So right now we're going to uh, go along to the community events with Pamela, so please stay tuned. Pamela, take it away. Thanks a lot, Errol. Now for this week's uh, community events happening in Whistler. Uh, the Whistler Lions Club Community Auction is going to take place on March the 21st at uh, Myrtle Phillips School. It's going to happen at 6 o'clock to 11 p.m. Um, this is going to be an auction and local entertainment. It's going to help the Whistler Diagnostic and Treatment Center as well as Mil Myrtle Phillips Public School, um, their field trip fund, and also various community groups in and around Whistler. So come out and uh, bid on some great prizes and uh, see some local talent while you're there. And that's on March 21st. Images 92, the annual art show staged by the Whistler Community Arts Council, will take place on April 11th in the Black Home Lodge. For more information, you can call Gail Rybar at 932-6643, and that was 932-6643. And did you know that there's rotary meetings um, held at the Delta Mountain Inn every Friday at noon? So we'll see you there. And this week at the Rainbow Theatre, starting March 13th, it's going to be Stop or My Mum Will Shoot at 7 o'clock, starring Sylvester Stallone. At 9 o'clock, it's going to be Memoirs of an Invisible Man, starring Chevy Chase and Daryl Hannah. So we'll see you out at the Rainbow Theatre. And, uh, and now we'll be back to Earl. Thank you very much, Pamela. With me right now is one of the owners of the Boot Pub and the Shoestring Lodge, Jonathan Maybe. Jonathan, welcome to Western Cable 6. Listen, this is a great, great setup down here. We've got the band well in the background. We're having a hell of a time down here. How did you guys manage to put this together? When did you put it together? Uh, we took over the property on January 10th. Uh, we took about five or six weeks to do the renovations to the pub and the uh, hotel itself. Uh, just a lot of ideas that I brought with me from Australia. We had some very successful places in Australia as well. And uh, just put it all together. Uh, decided to go with, get rid of the uh, past entertainment and go with seven, uh, seven nights a week with uh, live bands. We've had some really great bands and we've got a great lineup with uh, Bluesman Willie and uh, Yolanda coming from Chicago. Uh, he just finished touring with John Lee Hooker. He's doing a cross Canada tour and he's ending up his last date here in two weeks. Uh, Mark Dog Brown next week. Nigel Mack this weekend. Russell Jackson from BB King just finished. So we're getting great lineups of bands and we have a great booking agent for bands. Well, it's obviously paying off. I mean, the crowd here is fabulous. We're just getting going here, and I'll tell you, the music sounds terrific. Now listen, you guys have kind of a unique program with a shuttle bus system for all of your favorite patients. So why don't you tell us about that? Well, basically, uh, it's another idea that I started in Australia. We have uh, a free shuttle bus service from 8.30 until uh, closing, so people don't have to drink and drive, basically. We'll go to the Whistler Creek, down to uh, over to the village and to Alpine. Uh, and if there's groups of eight, eight people, call them, we'll go there and pick them up. Um, and it just, you know, we'll drive them back home at the end of the night. Safe drinking and driving. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's a convenience for them, basically, for the customer. It pays off. They run steady all night long, picking up and dropping people off. What a great idea, though, eh? To be able to sit there, a group of eight of you can be having a party at your house, they'll come pick you up and then drop you off. A fabulous idea. Now, not only is the pub working really, real well, but you've also managed to make this probably the most inexpensive place in town to stay. And I understand you can get a room here for as low as $13 a night. Uh, actually, it's $13 a bed, yeah. Um, that's another thing that we started. Um, when I came to Whistler uh, just, over, just around a year ago, I realized that there was a big gap in the market for people who just wanted to come and ski and not have to spend more on the accommodation than they did on the lift pass and for serious skiers and whatnot. And in the last six weeks, uh, we've been full practically every night. And it's a good, clean budget accommodation, cheaper than hostels or anything like that. And you have a color TV, cable vision, every room has a shower. We have queen shares, queens, uh, twins, uh, four shares, and six shares. Well, not, not only is that a great, I mean, the location that you've got here is fabulous. You're virtually walking distance to the, the ski mountain, aren't you? Well, we also have the shuttle bus that takes the skiers in the morning and picks them up in the afternoon from the mountains. We opened a ski rental shop. We have the cheapest ski rentals in town. All brand new ski.
occasion. We'll have mountain bikes uh, in a few weeks. Same budget mountain bikes with really good quality bikes. Um, you know, just giving a full service. We've got the border cantina up the stairs. We've got the food bistro in the air for food. There's a kitchen upstairs for guests that want to their, cook their own meals and not want to eat at a restaurant. Um, so yeah, just full service uh, at a budget price. But that's, there was a gap in Whistler for that, for people that needed that. And uh, make it more affordable for everyone to ski here. Well, you know, listen, where does one get hold of you if they want to get a room for the evening or for the afternoon or a bed for the afternoon? Uh, well, the phone number is 932 338 uh, the Shoestring Lodge. We have full-time reservations on staff, and uh, we're pretty full up, but we can usually uh, find something. If so phone in advance, eh? Yeah, definitely, book in advance. We're already getting big booking for the summer and for next Christmas. Ski team, ski club, the whole works because, you know, it's uh, everything they need. Now listen, not only these guys got a great pub and they've got a wonderful food fair down here and relatively inexpensive accommodations, but they're working very, very hard to help the community. They sponsor a lot of events and I understand you've got something coming up to help some of the local some of the local areas out. Yeah, well, a few weeks ago we did a charity night for uh, the victims that were burned out in their house fire. And on uh, March 22nd, we have the uh, charity night for the library. When I read in the paper about the closing hours and shortening of the hours at the library, I thought it was a real shame. So I phoned them up and said, what can I do to help? And so we organized a charity night. That's March 22nd, a band in the Goma. It's a World Beat African band. By going to claim, there'll be a cover charge which goes directly to the library. And part of our proceeds from the bar will go to the library as well. And uh, hopefully raise enough money to keep them open so they can stay open on Sundays now. And, uh, you know, we've had a really good, the local community has really been happy about what we've done with the food pub, turning it back into a locals bar and cleaning it up and keeping the prices lower than most places and the shuttle bus service and everything. So we're just trying to put it back into the community. Well, that's very obvious. I mean, the crowd here is really good. You know, uh, it looks like it's paying off. So listen, I'd like to thank you on behalf of Whistler Cable 6. Jonathan, maybe thanks very much for dropping by. One of the owners of the food club, I'll tell you. Great place to have a lot of fun. Great food. Come on down here. Enjoy yourself. Great bands. They've got a heart here, obviously, because they're helping out some of our local uh, our local businesses, our local functions. Listen, they're fitting in really, really well. So come on down and support them. Jonathan, thanks again on behalf of Whistler Cable 6. Thanks very much for dropping by. Well, we'll be right back after this short break. For unique, fun fashions with a Western flair, visit the Durango Boutique, ladies and men's wear. You'll find everything from boots to denim wear, oilskin coats, exclusive Akuba cowboy hats, and Joe Boxer shorts in silk and cotton. The Durango Boutique in the Nancy Green Lodge. Welcome back. You know, with every place that you work, you've got people that have the, really the basic heart and soul of an organization. And with me right now are two of the most outstanding race roadies that we have over on Whistler Mountain. Whistler Mountain is extremely well known for the way that they put on a race event. We're world renowned. We're the envy of most mountains everywhere. And to tell you the truth, these two guys that are with me are probably two of the finest. With me over here on my skier's left is Alan. Alan? Hello, hello. I'm uh, pretty good. Good. And with me on my skiers right over here is Alf. Alf, how long have you been over there? Well, oh, at least more than uh, more than three or four times. 
These two guys actually work very, very hard along with the race department, YP, Kate, and everybody else to put on events. Alan, would you like to tell us a little bit about what you have to do during the day? Uh, we have to uh, be there early in the morning. And then we go up the lift, uh, first on the lift. Sometimes we do the chair, the lift checks to help the lifties on the way up. And then uh, we get on the race uh, starting shack and we open it up because it's all locked up. And then we get all the gates out and, and then the coach comes over and uh, they set course and we help them to do it. We carry the gates on our shoulders. Pretty hard work, eh? Yeah, it's a lot of work. Alf, uh, you know, after you've set the course up, what are some of the other responsibilities that, say, a race roadie would have? Well, it's very important to, at the end of the race, to take all this stuff down again and wrap it all up into little bundles. And at the end of the day, we meet and learn about who won the race. Well, but what about some of the safety concerns? I mean, you guys have basically got to patrol everything, make sure nobody gets hurt, make sure the racers and campers have a good time. This is right, Errol. It's very important to always look over your shoulder and make sure that nobody is coming down across the course, which is a really important thing now, folks. People skiing onto the course during a race. It's a very scary thing having a, a racer come down there at 90K and somebody else crossing the course. Always look up before you cross the course. Well, actually, then, I guess, Alan, the course is really, the hill's not really closed, when, and most of the races are held over on the Orange Hill. Is that true? No, the course is not closed, but when the people come to ski and look at the race or whatever's going on, we want them to make sure that they're not skiing across the course or let, let the people ski between the courses, you know, or uh, up on the left or on the right, it's impossible. It's too tight to the trees, but on the left, skiers right, actually, it's fine under the chair and everything. No, the course is not totally closed. So what are some of the highlights that you've had, Alf, working over there? I mean, you, you obviously work with a lot of great people. Fantastic, Earl. It's amazing. We have people from all over the world coming to ski on these race courses every Friday for the Kokanee Cup Challenge on Whistler Mountain. There are lots of other fun races also. Check your local guide for that. Well, Alan, uh, now that you guys have uh, put the course up and you've taken the course down, then what do you do? Do you get to go home or do you have other things? Do you have a... Uh, a little bit of a, of a debriefing after a race? Yeah, we usually end up in uh, Dusty's at La Prairie and uh, we, we uh, share all the good feelings that goes with uh, La Prairie racing, you know. And putting on a successful race, of course. Oh yeah, and everybody cheers up and uh, we, they always acknowledge the roadies, you know, it's a good job. What kind of a skier do you have to be to, uh, to be able to go out there and, do, and, you know, work on a race course? Pretty good skier, top caliber, caliber? Yeah, you have to be a good skier to be able to be a roadie because uh, you have to carry things with you. And there's different, different, um, how do you say, uh, different tosh. And uh, some people have it like easy. But if you want to be a roadie and be a setting course, you better be a good, a good uh, skier. Great. So if somebody wants to be a roadie next year, what do they have to do to get on Whistler Mountain's great team? Well, it's a fantastic team, Earl. The main thing is perseverance. And, well, everybody pulls his own weight on that team. We're going to have a fantastic season uh, this year. It's hard to say what's going to happen next year. Hopefully El Nino won't be around to affect us, you know, with this uh, warm weather and this uh, early spring and all that. And, uh, well, it's hard to say, Earl. What do you think about it? Well, to tell you the truth, I know that no matter what happens, uh, we're going to have a great race team anyway, right? We're going to yeah. have a great crew. Listen, guys. Yeah, Errol, uh, by the way, Errol is a uh, roadie, too. I, everybody, be aware. Yeah, so I know a little bit of what's going on. Listen. <laughs> we're going to have the best winter yet. We're still happening. That's true. So listen, if you guys want to come out and have a really good time, you want to meet some of the two of the best, two of the finest, hardest working, man. These guys know what they're doing over there. Come on out to the Orange Hills sometime. Come over to the top of the uh, Dave Murray uh, Xerox. <laughs> and uh, you'll, have a, you'll have an opportunity firsthand to meet these guys, find out what a great job that they do do. Please come on out and enjoy the racing series. These guys are great. Alan, thanks very much for stopping by. Al, thank you very, very much. Take care. We'll see you out there on the hill. Come on out and ski.
Well, right now we're going to go over to we're going over to Brian and we're going to report from Blackcomb. Brian, please come on in. Thanks very much, Errol. And now here's what's happening this week or the next 10 days at Blackcomb. Blackcomb is in full operation with all regions of the mountain operating. Um, they're operating Monday to Fridays from 9 o'clock to 3.30. And then on the weekends and holidays, the holidays coming up, of course, they'll be going from 8.30 through till 3.30. Skiing is hard packed on machine groom runs. It's pretty icy and hard early in the day, and that softens up as the sun does its effect and the day goes on. You've got a 280 centimeter base. The best skiing reported has been in the Horseman Glacier and also up in the Blackcomb Glacier. So get up high and stay up high early and then work your way down the mountain as you go. This coming Saturday, March 14th, the Horseman Trading Company, that's right beside the Day Lodge for you people from out of town, is hosting the Bogner 92-93 Ski Wear Collection. So from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, stop by the Horseman Trading Company and you can see what all the swell people are going to be wearing through the year. This, uh, coming up in April, the world famous Sudan Couloir Ski Race Extreme is on. And I think it's still got a few spots le left. That's what I heard here in the week, so stop by Blackcomb and ask about it. If you haven't heard about it, this is 2,400 feet of thigh burning hell. It's an unbelievable ski race extreme, is the right name for this, uh, this race. They'll have a qualifying race on the 17th. It's going to be a Super G on Gandhi Dance. 150 top qualifiers will then go through to the next day, the 18th of April. And that's when the Sudan Kuwar Race Extreme, Ski Race Extreme will go. 150 of the best skiers in Whistler, some former World Cup competitors. So if you haven't seen this event before, if you haven't taken part, mark on your calendar April 17th to 20th and try and stop by and have a look at the Sudan Kuwar. For the lightly, slightly less adventurous, on the 18th of March, there is the Kokanee Challenge Series Spring Series gets going, and that will be a Super G. And then following on the 25th, there'll be a Slalom. Telemark snowboards are more than welcome, and there's also a pro category. On the ski school side, Blackcomb Ski School has got a great idea for improving your skills and your overall techniques while maximizing your skiing experience. It says that right here, maximizing your skiing experience. Blackcomb's top pros will take you on a tour of the best terrain, improving your skills. Four and a half hours instruction for $49.95. You can't beat that, folks. Come on down. Call Blackcomb Ski School, and they'll give you some more information about that. And finally for Blackcomb, in the next week or so, March 22nd for all the snowboarders, Showcase Snowboard is hosting and Blackcomb will be the venue for the show Showcase Snowboard Giant Slalom. Slow down a little bit. Call Blackcomb Guest Services for any information on any of these programs I mentioned. And we're going to go over and Pamela's got some more information for us. Pamela? <laughs> Thanks, Brian, for that great report on Blackcomb. I'm sure I'll see you there this weekend. I'm with uh, Mark from the Boot Bistro. He's going to tell us about the fantastic menu that they have here, the great hours of operation, and the fantastic food. So what can someone get to eat at the Boot Bistro? Well, Pamela, we've got kind of a varied menu here. Uh, we have an early evening menu, and then uh, we go into a late night menu. And we're one of the only places in Whistler that you can get a uh, late night uh, snack. So how late night can we get a snack at the Boot Bistro? From 3 p.m. to 2 a.m. And you can have a slice while you listen to some great music. Okay, that sounds great. So what other pub fare do you have? Uh, we've got uh, samosas, bhajis. We deal with uh, vegetarians. And uh, we have the basic burgers, chicken fingers, things like that. Special every night for a prey ski. And then we get into uh, our pizza, which is fantastic. Yeah, I heard the pizza is fantastic. Very busy right now. And we've got some uh, um, really good crowd coming in. It sounds like a pretty happy place to be. And from the uh, looks of your menu, it looks like you have a lot of great things to eat. And uh, Pam, have you ever tried our pizza? No, I haven't. And why don't we check it out over here? Okay, we're gonna check out the pizza, and we'll be right back after this short break.
and welcome back. Well, I'm going to be telling you what's going on on Whistler Mountain. On the 13th, the Kokanee Cup Series continues. It's a giant slalom. On the 14th, there is the dining, uh, midla moonlight dining and skiing. Great, great event. Fabulous food, wonderful time. That all depends, of course, on the weather. On the 16th, the Snowboard Series continues. And also on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, Stephanie Sloan's for women only. Men, please don't apply. On March the 17th, again, that lucky green day, and you know what that is, that's St. Patrick's Day. It's the end of the rainbow hunt. On the 19th of March, one of the old favorites. I'll tell you, this has been, uh, this has been absent for a couple of years. And uh, it's the Workers' Cup, and it's Workers' Cup number five, so make sure you get out there and support everybody. On March the 20th, the Kokanee Cup continues with a dual uh, slalom. And on the 20th and 21st, a great memorial. Bob Parsons Memorial races start with the downhill. That's on the 20th and the 21st. On the 22nd, they've got the Super G. There are three training days for that. Don't forget, that's Bob Parsons. That's the memorial race. Training days are on the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th. And that wraps it up for what's going on in Whistler Mountain for the next week or so. So I'm going over to Karen right now. He's going to tell you what's happening at the restaurants and over at the nightclubs. Karen, tell them what's going on. Great. Thanks, Daryl. We're having a great time down here at the Boot Pub. And now for what's going on in the restaurants and nightclubs in Whistler. Sushi Village, located in the Mountain Square, right above McConkie. Go on in, sit at their ultimate sushi bar, or experience authentic Japanese atmosphere in one of their semi-private dining rooms. The original Restaurante is also located in Mountain Square. You can choose from pizza or one of their other Italian specialties. Or take a drive down to Whistler Creek. Right behind the Husky Station is one of Whistler's best kept secrets, Florentina's. They have seafood, pasta dishes, and also great exciting appetizers and salads. Now here at the Boot, from Thursday through Saturday, we have Nigel Mack playing, a Vancouver blues guitarist. He's warming up right now, going to be playing soon. Monday through Wednesday is Harp Dog Brown. Sunday night is service industry night, and they have free pool right up until 6 o'clock, so come and check that out. Tuesday the 17th, St. Patrick's Day. They're having a great St. Patty's Day bash down here. Dress in green, come on down and win some cash. On Sunday the 22nd, they're going to have some African beat music, and it's a charity for the library, so keep that one in mind for the future. Buffalo Bills this week, on March 15th, they have No Fun. That's the band playing, No Fun. Uh, the 16th to the 18th is the Headhunters, and the 19th to the 21st is Terrence Simeon and the Mallet Playboys. Tommy Africa's, remember every Sunday night they have a house band now, Vertical Drop. Now back to Errol. Hi, well, I'll tell you, we're having one heck of a time down here at the Boot Pub in the Shoestring Lodge. With me right now is the main man, the man that's behind this fabulous group that's going to be playing back here for a little bit with us, Nigel Mack. Nigel, how would you like to tell us a little bit about the group? Well, we're a four-piece R&B band. Uh, we've got two guitars, bass, and drums. I play harmonica and slide guitar and acoustic slide guitar and uh, sing and have a lot of fun. And we're here to entertain the patrons and just get down and, and play some music. How long have you guys been together? Well, I've had the band together for five years now and uh, all the way from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, for those folks out there who are from the prairies. Oh, that's someplace in the middle of the country, isn't it? That's right, Saskatoon, good old Saskatoon. You actually played rhythm and blues out in Saskatoon? I tell you, when it's 40 below zero, you really get the blues. <laughs> so listen, you guys specialize in rhythm and blues. Obviously, we've got the groups warming up here in the background. You guys, uh, we've listened to you tune up. You play a great, great, great sound. So uh, you're here for basically, uh, what, March the 12th to the 14th, and then where are you off to? That's right, three days, and then we're off to uh, Jasper. We're doing the, what we call the home, the hometown tour here. We're off to Jasper, and then we're off to Calgary after that, and I'm back home to Saskatoon for a week at the old blues bar, Buds on Broadway, so. So you've been to Whistler for how long now? Oh, we just got here, what, a few hours ago. So what do you think of it? <laughs> oh, so far it's great. We played here a couple of times before. Are you going to be coming back later on this year? Oh, definitely, definitely. You bet. Great. Do you like playing here in the boot? Ah, it's a great time. It's a great time, man. So listen, if you guys want to come on down here and have a really good time, come on down to the boot and the shoestring. 
I'll tell you, you're going to have a really, really good time. Nigel, listen, you got to get up there and sing us a couple of tunes. Thanks very much for stopping by Whistler Cable 6. I'm going appreciate it. All right, man. Thank All you. All the best. Listen, this is Errol Flynn on behalf of, uh, let me see, we've got uh, Karen over here, Pamela, Brian, and myself. Thanks very much for watching this segment. If you really want to know what's going on in Whistler, tune us in every week, and we'll let you know what's going on in both mountains and all the events that are going on at the restaurants and, of course, the local bars. And I'll tell you, come on down to the booth, enjoy yourself, have a really good time. We'll catch you next week. Stay tuned. Bye for now. Take care. Thanks, Nigel. Happy bluesing.